You are watching the Pan African Daily TV with Dr. Susan Tata. The Africa we want. Unity, consciousness, our culture, our spirituality, our history. One Africa for Africans worldwide. Motherlands calling its diaspora home. Join my voice. Join my team. Join my campaign. Campaign 21 hashtag 1 million subscribers on the Pan African Daily TV YouTube. Be a volunteer. Apply now. Be the new Africa. So, 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 I think we are live. Direct from the Pan African Daily TV studio. Can you guys hear me out there? Um, there's been a lot of internet breakout on the continent and in even in Europe and the diaspora. So the question is, what's going on? Um, usually we were supposed to have our guest in the studio today. And for some other reasons, she's been here for past two hours and no power. Power just goes out in Ghana, in Sudan, in South Africa, in Cameroon, where we're speaking right now. And a lot of people are beginning to question the motives behind this. Does that has to do with the two um, beefing of each other in Europe that Africa is about to pay a, a, a huge price? But to be honest with you, it's not just only in Africa. I experienced it even live here in the studio um, in the US. Um, we have a lot of breakage. The internet is slow. Um, for the past week or one week, you see, we've not been able to come live um, trying to sort out the problem. We thought that it was a local issue, but no, it's it's getting serious. Does that has to do with the inflation? Does that has to do with the economic uh, um, and the depression that we're going through, as a matter of fact, during the seasons? But today we are kicking off with the what we call the 16-day um gender-based violence domestic gender-based domestic violence against women uh particularly the girl child and um the kickoff is today is we see the whole world going crazy on this topic talking about the issue of gender-based uh domestic violence and we are starting also to bring this topic on the pan-african daily tv to find out the causes, the root cause, and how do we find ourselves in this situation today? Because as a matter of fact, it's becoming like it's a political discourse where people just talk about the symptoms. People just talk about the battery, whether it is trafficking, it is uh, physical violence or mental violence, um, but where is all these things coming from on the Pan African Daily, we want to forge into this topic a lot with a lot of voices. Those that will just be talking um, about the con about the context of it, like what do they see if a man and a woman fight or um, a woman is abused, uh, beaten, and even um, killed to death. And we've seen that in a lot of homes, not only on the continent, but in the diaspora, but particularly on uh, uh, in Africa. And we want to find out where we living like that, where our ancestors living like that, where is this coming from? Because we do know a lot of what we so-called um, the African culture today did not originate from our ancestors. Let us be clear on this. A lot of what we term and we refer to today as it is our culture. It is our way of life. What, what culture uh, um, marginalizes the other people against the other or the other gender or what we call gender? Uh, we call it the vibration and the, and the, and the, uh, the you know, uh, the diversity, uh, the man and the woman. So we want to look into this uh, a topic for 16 days with 16 voices speaking around on the same topic and you are going to really agree with me that the understanding the meaning the, the the root cause would not be discussed if we don't discuss it on the pan-african daily tv if we don't bring scholars researchers we see a lot of women actually voice uh, or a voice 
or are raising their voices. People are putting out a lot of energy out there for so long. Nothing is changing. It has been the same thing going on and on. Last two weeks ago, I heard a sister talked about how the husband just beat the junior sister and chopped up the finger. And um, it was a shock. But we hear about all these things going on every day until some are killed. We know in the past, even the famous Nigerian singer that was killed by the husband. And all these things, uh, we are still not able as Africans to bring solutions to eat. Just talk about it as if it's eating jollof rice in a bar and drinking some whiskey. And we talk about it as if we're watching a, a football soccer games in Qatar where people are just jubilating and just celebrating and carrying flags that are powerless, no power in them. Abuse of all kind of, uh, uh, you cannot even describe it. And sometimes he asks us, so what are we actually jubilating and celebrating? What are we dancing for? What, are, what What's the hype about? Just go back and dance, drink, listen to some Afrobeat and come back and get into the same virus that has contaminated us for 400 more than years into strange cultures and educational systems, miseducational systems that infiltrated our culture from the origin. And we are not thinking about that. We're not asking questions. Was it like this before? Did our ancestors do this? Or it's just some new patterns or it is the infiltration of all the cultures who brought, I mean, their cultures into our own and we begin to see the patterns and we call them African culture. What is that culture that we talk about? And I heard a sister corrected me today when I was struggling with the vocabulary to say gender based, what, what, what. And, he, and she just went out and said, Dr. Susan, do you mean GBF? Until they could even abbreviate it. And I was like, okay, right, I get that. Oh, oh, oh. I don't know. Is somebody hearing me? Yeah. Again, Sister Fatou should come in and join us on this conversation. She is actually invited. Exactly. She is invited, Kwame. Greetings to all of you in the chat. Um, yes, Matamera, Cheryl, all of them. I have invited them and they will be coming on the show this week to talk about um, this topic. Because like I said, a lot of us are talking about this but we are not asking questions. Did we live like that before? Was this our agenda? Did our ancestors live like that? Is it our culture to beat, even our children? Did we do that in the past? Why are we doing that today? Is it our piece of cake or somebody else that we're dwelling and fighting us? So thank you, Devan. You say you can hear me. Thank you, Kwame. Thank you so very much. All right, you can hear. Good, fine. Yes, because you see we're having new systems in the studio and uh, we're trying to upgrade everything. Stay encouraged, Dr. T this Yes, thank you. Thank you, Jeremiah. Jermaine, Jermaine, thanks. thanks. Yeah, of course, um, we're going to be getting a lot of voices and teachers. Cheryl, thank you so much. Thank you for being here, Sister Queen. Even you, like I said, you... Senior executives are going to come up and talk on this topic. What do we understand about this? Matamera, you're on on Monday. Remember, you already planned on Monday to share your opinion. What do you understand by gender based domestic violence? Because in an African context, what we do when we quarrel in the village, we'll say, This is palava. Uh, I mean, we'll say, Palava. You find me palava. I find you palava. We call it palava. And um, so maybe if we break it down to palava, we could understand in Nigeria um, or in, in common African uh, language, we say wahala, you know, either wahala or palava. So but when we begin to hear some of this kind of GBF, gender-based domestic violence, I mean, I like, give me a break. If you, if, if, if you talk about a topic like this with, with my mother in the village, she'll be like, what are you talking about? You know, so there are some quotations, and I used to say it. There are some, there are some, there are some words that are not African words, 
we don't even understand the meanings of these words. We don't even know what it means. We don't, I mean, to, to, to solve and to talk about solutions in these topics, we need to understand the terminology that, that they use for it and to understand the history of it and to understand why we are where we are. Because we Africans, we, we get everything on the cover and we begin to, we adopt problems that were never created by us in the first place. So most of our challenges are not comparable. When, when we want to talk about our development, we start talking about, oh, I look like Chinese today. You know, the Chinese in America, they call themselves Chinese and as well. And I keep saying it all the time. You cannot compare our struggles with any other race on this earth. Don't even go there. We cannot. Our challenge as Africans is different from any other race. And so we cannot measure our solutions and compare it to their stories. That is the reason we have to bring our voices and create our own solutions. And when we are creating our solutions, we have to look into our spirituality, which we are dealing on the principles of, of, of my art. And we begin to question this value critically. Did our ancestors live like this? Where do all these challenges come from? Why do we compare when we're talking about our development? Yes, we can talk about political development. That I would absolutely agree with you. That most of the challenges that we, are inherit that we inherited, and we're talking about it today, was never created by us in the first place. So it will be very, very important for us to understand what are the solutions that we, uh, what are the challenges that we're looking solutions to? So the first thing is, how do these challenges look like? Are they our own? And then we can begin to talk about our African culture. If we diagnose it and go into this research and find, did they originate from our ancestors, from our forefathers, from our parents? How do the ones in the urban cities react to challenges like this in the village? We compare the village setup and the urban setup and the, even the international setup. You will take a word like the gender-based violence or GBF and you put it in the, in, in the, in this, in, in the context of the village, in the context of the urban uh, cities, like those that have re relocated to the urban towns, and then you take it into the diaspora at the international level or the global level. So you see that we have three systems that are playing places here, that are into, uh, into the game. We have the village system, which might be our own, might not also be our own, because remember, we were colonized. As they took our brothers, our sisters into slavery, we were later colonized. So even in the villages, the systems that we are using in the village today were not the systems of my great grandmothers or even my mothers. And every day we see how the dynamics are changing. So, and then we move to the urban cities. The urban cities are the ones coming from the village, relocating into the townships. So what do they bring with them from the village that they already know? They inherit in the, in the towns, when they get to the towns, what type of lifestyle? How do they engage? And then we take it across into other, like international is like on the continent even, not just even global, not just going out of the globe. Uh, uh, so we, for instance, a situation happens in Nigeria and you take it to Ghana. Is it the same? Is it the same dynamics? And then we take it global, into the global systems. So you can begin to understand that when we look at our beginnings, at our setup, at our structure, most of the steps that we have taken are not our own. Until we go back to Kemet, to Sudan, because Sudan came even before Kemet. If I'm wrong, I'm, I stand to be corrected. 
Understand? And we know that even the religion that we are hitting our heads and talking about came from Sudan, the, Sudan, the origin of it. And I have, a, I have a researcher on that topic. It's going to be very, very interesting. So when we are launching the 16 days of gender-based violence and domestic you know, violence in our homes, in our communities, in our jobs, everywhere we go, on the street, in the diaspora, the migrants are always the, the target, the men, the children, the women. We need to first of all understand what is the root cause. Africa, we would never get our own solutions without knowing the root cause. Did this come from our fathers, from our ancestors, from our created, or we inherited it when we were colonized or when we were enslaved. These are two patterns of looking at our solutions. But most often when we come here, that's what we compare a lot. Oh, look at China, look at Japan, look at this. And I said, wait, give me a minute. Don't, don't even go there. Give them our history and let us have that conversation. Give them our history, the history of the African, and let us have that conversation of comparison. And you would understand that nobody beats us, even with our history until today. We're still on the global platform. We're still doing the soccer games together, irrespective of our economies. At that time, when the African nation or teams are going to Qatar, nobody looks at them as a developed country. When we are on the football stadium and we're playing, Thing. Do they look at some and say, oh, they did not pay their, their, their FIFA registration fee because they are uh, third world countries? Do they give them other the, uh, conditions? In, in terms of penalty, it's, 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 it's on the field. Do we have those differences in terms of economy when we talk about poorer nations and always referring Africa to one of that? Do we? No. Because it's very clear. Today, in the Americas, there's something, the tradition that they call Black Friday. And we go out and shop and shop and shop and get a family. Yesterday was Thanksgiving. Families came together. Most of it in the traditional setup, they cook uh, turkey, they bake, uh, people fly in and out. You, you saw, I posted a video when my niece came from, uh, from Texas and, and we went out to dance. And she was always like, oh, and... Um, yeah, we have to go at this Thanksgiving and, and stuff like that. I said, no, we go out because it's our culture of going out and sharing and connecting and having a nice time among us. So it's not about celebrating a particular day for one reason, because we do it all the time. I saw my great grandmother and fathers do it. I saw my, my, my grand and my parents and me, and I will pass it on to my children. So that's the point. When we go into seeking our solutions, and telling our own stories and creating the change that we want for the Africa that we want, we must take into consideration the inherited challenges in our own. And we want to redress our own. And we also want to talk about the challenges that were brought unto us. And then we find a common platform. How do we react to others and how do we react to ourselves? So you see, our story can never be the story of any other race because of the challenges that we've been through. Because we are now starting, just starting to understand. I mean, I, I, I don't even know whether we understand. We are starting to listen to our voices. We just started. And the pan the order, the things that we do, we're only still starting to listen. Okay. And um, before we go into understanding, no, we started by listening to ourselves. And then we go into understanding. So we were, we are at the level where we just listen. That's why we keep thinking and we keep saying all the time, oh, we're just speaking, we're just talking, we're just talking. You know, Africans just talk, we're just talking. No, we are not talking. We are listening to ourselves, even by ourselves. I don't know any time that we ever had started to just sit and listen to ourselves. 
I don't know any time before now that we had connected thousands of voices worldwide, African speaking and telling their stories from their own perspective and telling the stories that the world is telling about us, but from our own perspective. I don't know any time that is better than this time. And so if you're African at this time, at this space, in this century, in this year, in today that we're talking about, I mean, you should be the most happiest person, the most prosperous person, the most educated person, the most knowledgeable and the most authentic person. To be honest with you, while we are speaking in the times of inflation or whatever thing is going on, there's a lot of millionaires and billionaires that are getting into wealth creation as we speak. If you like, you say the price of oil and corn and whatever has skyrocketed because of the, the war in Ukraine. That is your business. Depends on how you look at it. But right now, as I'm talking to you, the level of awakening and the education of the African noun by Africans has given you so much audacity, so much courage to be able to harness your potentials, your creativity, your know-how, your knowledge. We have been able to spark out or to spark out of you that potential of knowledge and power and greatness that your ancestors had entrusted into your DNA. And if that, if you're not awakened and you've not unspart and you're still getting distracted for one reason or the other, then maybe, just maybe you need to question yourself again. No, not even only questioning yourself. Go back to all the productions that we have done on the Pan-African Daily. That's just what I would advise us to do. To be honest with you, go back, just go back to the first conversations that we have to today. You will see that every other thing, we are only just doing what? Recycling. Thank you. Exactly, Nadi. Madi, you said, I don't need teachers to teach me um, nonsense. I know, history teachers don't teach me nonsense. That's what our late ancestor brother uh, Felakuti said. Teacher don't teach me nonsense. Because he knew where he was coming from. Today we hear and dance and walk our, 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 our shake it out to the sounds of Afrobeat. Because that gene of Felakuti is pushing up. But before we our ancestors that were enslaved brought it to the Americans and the Caribbean. Look at all our sounds and music. It is not today. And so when these trends start coming back and we're like, oh, today we dance to Afrobeat, we dance to sounds that it is because it always has been there, but it was not ignited. It was not awakened. It was just put to sleep. All these giants, like you see the Bonner Boys, the, the Davidos, um, our brothers out here in the hip hop scene and the R&B scene. Look at all the queens that used to rock these things out. It already was there, but we never felt it like the way we're feeling now. We never digested. We never intentionally danced to it like the way we do now. That's why I say, just do the things that you used to do five years, but now in this conscious state, and you see who you are. We are all new versions. We are all reborn. We are all rebirth into this new Africa, into this new gene, into this calling of the chosen of our ancestors, into the spirit of my art. If you are not in this position right now, if you are an African that is still in that old pattern of life, that you think wealth creation, that you think harnessing and, and, and upgrading your potentials, you need to do some other things like the system has wanted you. It's long gone. We're talking about two years today when they were shut down and gave you the African, your voice and your right of place to control, to build the world that you want, the Africa that you want. This is 
we're running of 2022 and this crazy stuff happened in 2020 and that was the breakthrough and that was the the the, the season for the african to arise to rise up to pick up its place to position its place whether you are at home or abroad i don't care where you are watching me it's the same vibration don't tell me, oh, because on the continent, we don't have any potential. The continent is the richest space on earth. As a matter of fact, you on the continent are the ones to survive us in the diaspora. Do you hear what I'm saying? You on the continent. But the first thing you need to do is to get your act together. Position yourself. Oh, position yourself for greatness. You have teachers, preachers, mentors, scholars, researchers, voices in every category. Even children are talking to us. Youth are talking to us. The girl child is talking to us. It is gone in that time. Those days in the past where we sit and say, oh, you know, I'm your father, I'm your mother, you have to listen to me. Pass way back. The harmony and the reciprocity is there. The spirituality of my heart, the balance is there. And that's why topics like this 16 days of gender-based violence in our homes, in our jobs, everywhere the African is. We want to look at this topic from an African perspective. What are these kind of terminologies? What does it mean to us? What does palava mean to us? That's the African language I grew up to. That's how, oh, I saw them making palava. When we saw our parents quarrel or they have a, had a fight, we say, oh, they were at a palava. In Nigeria or in the popular you know, African language, we'll say wahala. Look at their wahala. And today we hear music coming like you know, wahala not the finish just enjoy what time and okay exactly that is it <laughs> thank you so much Deroy. you say you love my work i love you too i love you too so much it's our work it's our work i don't know whether you're even my son <laughs> it's our work all of us it is not a one man work i tell you all the time it is not our one-man work. Now, we are moving, Baba Marvin say, as we have been moved closer and closer towards the practices of our kidnappers, conquerors, and murderers who beat their women in the caves for bringing more mouths to feed in the midst of food scarcity, we are taking an uncivilized behaviors every, at every level. Absolutely correct, Baba. I wish I could have you in the studio here with me. This is exactly the point where I want us to look at it. Yes. Thank you, Cheryl. African beautiful, you look royal. Yes, look at my background. Because we're talking about royal stuff. This is deep stuff we're talking about here on the Pan-African Daily. Okay, this is not just a, a content created that we're doing here. It's, no, we want to diagnose all this. Where did all these things come from? We have our palava, like our wahala. Is this the same thing that they're telling us that we are cannibals now? You know, we don't even know how to treat each other. Like we build, beat, and kill each other. They make us look like some stupid kind of people that don't know the essence of value and family. They brand us as useless men and women. The woman, as if the woman would just sit there and be beaten and killed. The man just comes and beats the woman. No. What we see happening, manifesting, we have to diagnose the root cause. Are we that stupid that we don't know how to treat each other? Are we cannibals that we beat and kill each other? That we abuse each other, rape them and murder them? Where is this coming from? I didn't know the tradition. Growing up in the village, I didn't see that. I saw come, go, things happened. 
We dance in the field, we dance to Molo, to the songs, of, in, we swim in the river, we caught fish, fishes. We did, we did a lot of stuff, but apart from this, I said it one time, I grew up in the village where till today there's no electricity, there's no road, no terrible road, there are no lights on the street. I remember we used to walk like five, 10 kilometers, 200 miles to go to the farms. And these are, I mean, bushes with no light, nothing. But I never heard, we never heard in the village, in these dark spaces in the forest that a child, a woman, a girl was murdered, was raped, was dumped. And believe me, this is a system where you could do those things and nobody would even realize that something happened. Because we didn't have no satellite, we didn't have no phones. We didn't, it, I mean, like I said, it's in the, what they call the jungle, in the deepest of the forest. Me, Dr. Susan Tata, I will walk in that forest to go and meet my father on the bush and on the farm. And nothing happened. On the way, I met uncles on their horses whether they were the Bororo or the Fulani people, and we will meet and they will greet me. My daughter, how are you? Where are you going to? Are you going to meet your mother on the farm on the other side of the hill? And I said, yes, Baba. Say, how are they doing? How is everyone in the compound doing? And they will give me water or they give me a palm wine. They always sit in their kettle to drink and say, go on well. Greetings to your father. You know, be obedient, child, okay? I'm very be happy. I'm proud of you You're going to help your mother in the farm. Okay. And I was, I just, it, it, I don't know. That's why I speak and I come here and I empower and I educate because everything that I grow up to know, I never knew it when I was growing. And today we begin to question all these things because everything looks strange. I never heard anyone that would even tamper. And you can imagine how we were growing so beautiful, sexy, tall, you know. Some, but no brother, father in these dark spaces in the village, whether it is in the night, at the deepest of the forest, that had any notion to even come closer to you with an intention to rape you or to abuse you. There was nothing no need for those bodily stuff that just drive you crazy. So something is wrong. Like Reverend Shock said, nothing happened with us Africans. Something happened. We are very okay, but something happened. Something meddled with the cultures of humanity and the world. And we find ourselves in the spaces where we are today. We find ourselves trying to solve problems that we don't even know, that we don't even understand. When we talk about, like I said, when we talk about our palava, it's something else. It's no matter what that even others will have. If there's an accident, collateral damage, then we would know what happened. What happened to us? Copying try to reproduce, try to live a lifestyle. These things are lifestyles. Some do it for money, some do it for pride, some do it because they are so sick. No human that is born on this continent grew up, whether in the diaspora or on the continent, in a healthy family situation would ever think about that. So what went wrong? Until we understand what went wrong, then we can begin to look for solutions that are our own. Don't just pick up some, 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 some quotations and we begin to label ourselves as if we don't know who we are, as if we are primitives and, and the most cannibal set of people and they look at us as if we are monsters that kill our own. Show me one, I'll describe how they look like. Even in the broad daylight, even under the, the street light and you are not even... Um, allowed to attempt and to be a part of that process. So yes, we're going to be talking about the 16 days of activism. And we know a lot of women and African and men, particularly also that are into it, that are bringing their voices. Because you see why the, the problem that I first of all have is that gender base. That's already the first problem. 
Mm -mm. I don't believe. The, the, my first, I, I go again to say it. My first problem that I have is gender-based. Men are abused as well. So more than we can even think about. It is a damaged system. The woman and the man, the female and the male. No balance, as we know. There had been no balance. And that's why some of these topics we'll be talking about it in the next years to come. It's just going to be a history, not our story. It's going to be his story. Okay? Because we are into that reciprocity, justice and balance, equality. Mother, my heart came back and just inspired us and is bringing us to greatness. We are on our senses. Nobody even dares to disrespect or to even raise a voice at our children, at our husbands, at our wives, at our siblings, at each one another. We're just so civilized. Yes, a lot of us are still sick. So, so sick. But we're walking away from these damages of the past into greatness. And you can see the signs and the symbols everywhere. Nobody needs to tell you that, that we are woke and unstoppable. Nobody. Do you want us, you, you want to see the symptoms and the and the and, and, and the characteristics everywhere? Just look around you. Maybe you're just the one that is still not. But everyone that is watching me here on this conscious community, we are gone. We are gone. Way back. We are past that level. We just fly now. We're not even skipping again. We're not even flying and stinking like the butterfly. We have moved fast beyond that. And the only thing that I want you is to believe in that. Just believe. Just believe in that power, in that intelligence, in that greatness that you are already into without being conscious. That's why we talk about the education of the mind. Kwame is saying Baba Mahon taught us this, this, this. This racist wants you and I to be so negative against our land and our brothers and sisters. Way back. Masha, I greet you, the entire Bantu family, and I bring greetings to all our people out here. Of course, Sherry, that's what I was saying. Men get so abused. It's a whole damage system. And that's what I was telling you. The first thing that I would like us to correct um, this week is that notion of gender base. Yes, gender base. We're so damaged. It's a whole, it's a whole collapse that we were in. We're talking about selling ourselves. We sell even one another for money, crossing them to whatever countries that we think that they're looking for greener pastures, put so much money into it. And you call it a healthy system? You sitting there and saying, I'm doing documentation to send my sisters out there to go and do whatsoever you yourself cannot do if that money was so much and the situation was so good, why do you not just go and get it to do it by yourself? Why? No. Uh-uh. We still not. We still not. So yes, it is not from us. It is not from us. It is not our foundation. I refuse. I disagree. I turn my back on it. And I spit on it. It can never be my foundation. I never saw them did it. I never heard them did it. I don't. So we need to examine and look at how sick issues that are affecting us like that. You find a palava in a family in, in those days, like I said, as women. If it was between the families and those that were married, in-laws would come in. Particularly the women would come in and sit at the table and what's going on between our children here? I did a very important and an interesting uh, um, lecture on it on uh, Brother Mbongi's show. 
and that's going to be available to payable members. And as I can tell you, I'm telling you right now, we're creating this susantata.com from TikTok to real to connect it to Pan-African Daily because there's some deep stuff I can never share with you on the Pan-African Daily. Very deep stuff. And so that deep stuff would be available on susantata.com. We're going to create the TikTok to it and the real to it and some Instagram stuff to it. But I'm telling you, this is deep stuff. And I know. Most of our professors are teachers and mentors. Because you see what we hold here, it's a warm-up. I told you already, two, three years ago, when we started with Baba Marvin and all of us here, and we told you it was a warm-up. It is a warm-up. It was awakening you. Children that have been sleeping, you don't just come into the room like a parent and just bump into the room and open the door and say, wake up! <laughs> when they get up like that, you see they get confused. They don't even know where to go to. Ah, mommy, daddy, baba. Uh, what is going on here? And they're shocked. No. You walk into the room responsibly and you tap them. Can you wake up? Because you have respect for that soul. You don't just come in and bash up the soul to wake up like that. No. And that's what this crazy stuff of technology somehow do to our brains and damage us. At every 5.30 or 6.30, your alarm rings to dislocate your sleeping soul and get it into a modus of functionality beyond your control. This is deep stuff. Like I said, we're not going to be treating it here. And this stuff is really going to be accessible to members that need it, to the chosen that are taking from level to a next level. As you know, you see now, we do the gospel according to Yeshua Maponga on Sunday and the whole week will be struggling to come live because we don't have access. That has to stop. So we're going to scrutinize, you know, and you know what? Like I told you, don't be afraid of anything. The most easiest thing to do is to let go of your fears. And I will teach you how to do that, but that will not be here. Because exactly that's why you keep saying, oh, you know, let it out and the card is out. And you can never catch it to put it back in that. I told you I'm going to teach you the strategies of the village and how we survived and how we made it and how we rolled and reigned and rose into greatness. All right. And that was truly my art. That it is. And it's coming back. Yeah, so like I said, we, we, we treated the topic, and this topic was on polygamy. Polygamy. <laughs> Where I advise, you know, our women, our girls, our boys, and we and usher them into the space of holiness and sacredness. The science, the secret, secret, powerful knowledge of how we build those cultures. Women who came together. The Amazons, what you see today, the woman king or the Black Panther and stuff like that. We did it long time ago. We set all the structures that people are looking, other systems come and wanted to tear down. Where do you think they came from? Today we just talk about polygamy. Oh, polygamy is this. Why do you think or for, for one good sake they don't recognize that system? Why do you think the world hates it and promotes something that is theirs. These are questions we don't ask. Why do you think, do you think it's just, it's not important? No, they always do the relevant stuff. And that's why Professor James, Baba James is always, we're at war, but we nobody but with ourselves. We are at competition. We nobody but with our own self. We have just ourselves to compete. We have just ourselves that we're going at war with. Nothing more, nothing less. All right? So when we talk about even topics, like I said, the polygamy, that's a very important lecture. And when we would upload it to our space, please, A, you must be able to have access to it if you are looking forward to build a healthy family situation. You would understand the secret of our great grand ancestors and the women that came together and built that womanhood 
called polygamy. Never was a man construct, never had been. But why did it change today to what we're seeing and the patterns that we're seeing and the way this it's been done? It's the same topic that we're talking about, call it gender-based violence or, or palaver or what. Nothing has changed. It's just somebody actually taking the original and blackmailing it and castigating it and putting hate into it and then give it to you and you buy it and embrace it and love the hate in it, okay? And begin to talk against it and begin to be against it and begin to feel inferior against it. But let me tell you, the good news is nobody comes out for something that is useless. Nobody comes out to challenge a system that is not important or that is not strong. They only come in because the essence and the power in that structure, if not destroyed, would lighten up, would illuminate the space and deliver and free the captives. Okay? That is the point. Challenge me at your own risk. Okay? Because that's the knowledge that is being downloaded right now. And we receive it directly and we pour it out there for humanity. So don't come tell me anything here about, oh, we're doing this, oh, our women are being... That's, that's, just, that's just what we see. Like we said, the symptoms. You cannot cure a, a, a fever from just the temperature and this. They are the symptoms. Oh, high temperature, sweating in the night, or headache, like you, you, you have a strain and, you know, a pain in your aches. Those are symptoms. And if you go into the like this, they give you the root cause of what is causing the symptoms. What we see in the gender-based violence or what we call palava and wahala are symptoms. But what we want to talk about is the root. Where are the symptoms of my temperature coming from? Where's my headache? Why do I take Panadol or Paracetamol? I think it was Davido or one of these artists from Nigeria that sang it. Why do we take Panadol for our headache without going to find out what is the root cause? What brought us to this headache? So that's the story of the African. We are struggling to solve the headaches that was not even brought by us. What we have to do is to diagnose the root cause. Did my forefathers, my ancestors do this? If not, why not? What happened that brought us here? So yes, this week, and the next 16 days, we're powerful 16 voices. And I think there are going to be more because at least it's already full, so full. Because we have voices in Antigua, Barbuda, on, on the continent, in Europe, in the Americas, that will be coming to share their opinion on this topic. And like I said, we are not going to do anything more than just asking what is the meaning of this how do you understand it how do you perceive it and after we conclude these days uh we would be now on the session of analyzing it in a conference or for you to spill out your own experiences and you will see that most of the things that we always go to look for solutions we never look at the root causes we don't even know the meaning. We just adopt them and run with it and embrace it and facilitate it. Just like someone say, bring, my, bring your children to me and I put water on them and ask them this. Oh, mm. and we just facilitate. Now I don't even question why. I don't even ask, oh, why should I put water on my head and some words that they say in some kind of languages that I don't even understand and put some water on my head. What if they're just cursing and cursing and putting me into a situation that I will never? But I believe. I just believe it. 
and they did it 400, 500 years ago. And now I'm the one, I don't even need their permission to do it. I'm just the one now going to facilitate. I'm the one now facilitating it. I don't need some other person. Nobody is there to watch me if I did it. And we just see, I'm the mother and the father say, oh no, I belong to this church. You belong to this church. Oh, no, 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 no. We have to go to this church. And they live in the same compound. They're married to the same husband. They have the same children. And one is going to the other one, the, the other church. The other one is going to the other church. These are all some things we have to talk about, people. What kind of a unity black love family that sits together in a compound? I experienced that. I did. So when we talk about the village, like I said, the format that we see in the village, we can't really identify it to our great grands, bring it to our own fathers and mothers, our gener and then to the generation of my elders and my generation and the future generation. We analyze this and you will see the dynamics and the changes in it. And sometimes it's so, like today we say, oh, the trends, what are the trends today? You know, you look at the marketing situation today, the economic, political, social, technological. You look at PEST today, you, you, you analyze in the world politics, you know, everything that the dynamics that are just changing. It is not different from you, African. But the thing in the world system is they're playing their ping pong ball system, the games that they already are used to. And you're just new on it. And you're just being put on the table and kicked left, center, right. And today you look at the Chinese and like, I'm a Chinese. And you look at a, a, a European and like, you want to be a European. And you look at this, just, just, just like hovering. But that is gone. History. No more. Because now we day here now. Now we day, now we day, now we day here now. Okay. And when we will be launching our, our DJ after night, you'll be hearing all the things and you see the reason how even our music and dynamics are changing today bro, uh, honorable Hondi wayne posted me a picture uh, because we're going to treat the topic congo tomorrow with a brother out there bena and um in and in, in his project and the evolution and you know congo is very important i said it last week but because of the interference or whatever we could not bring them on the show last week so i hope tomorrow it will work out and so Brother Wayne posted a picture on me. I'm like, look at our celebrities like Econ, you know, like all of them in the diasporas that are connecting, you know, merging. Uh, we're bringing all them together. Brother Jan from Antigua said it, you know, when they first got uh, received or hosted a brother, uh, Bonaboy in, in the Caribbean, it was like a boomerang. And they were so happy to dance to the sound. And I'm like, you see, nothing is new that is happening now. Nothing. It is just the dynamics in the system. But the difference of what is happening now is the power in our awakeness. And it is unstoppable. Stop being afraid. I know people that want to come on the camera like, no, Dr. Susan, you know, I prefer to be in the behind. Why? This is who, this is exactly when we talk about the fear. That's how the fear starts. We're always like, no, you know, I don't want to, I just want to stay in the background. Why? You look at Africans in Europe, it's, it's, a, it's a consensus, look it or not, it's there. Even in the churches, when Africans go to church, they want to go in the back seat. They, they get on a bus, they go at the back. They get in a party, they're always looking to go behind. Nobody wants to sit in front. So, so that's, it's, it's, it's a thing. You do it unconsciously. Even if you get in the front door, they look at the back space. You know, the moment they just get in, they just put their head, they bury their head and they're looking for space behind. Do you know what behind is? Do you know what sitting in the back is? Do you know what sitting in the back seat is? Do you know what means take your space on the front seat is? These are all simple format for leadership. But you see, that's how the world designed it. And that's why we feel complex to it. Because in our African setup and the, 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 the origins of the Ma'ad, there was no behind, there was not in front. Nothing. So you could be behind your leader. You could be in front your leader. 
your voices matter, even if you are behind or you are in front. And so this leadership things that we're seeing, it's not new. They can go bring, refurbish the formulas and bring it into everything. It has been here from the origin of our creators. Our ancestors did it long before. Today, we struggle to raise five, three, two kids in a developed world that has child support. Why is it not functioning? Why is it not functioning? Why are we still struggling? And if we look at our mothers, our great grandmothers, 15, 20, 18, no child support, no systems that we put into place. Why did it function? These are the critical questions we as Africans should be asking. So when we get into these theories, I'm not just coming here to promote some Western ideology or, or some things that I know don't work. Doesn't work, has never worked in an African context. No matter how we play those games, because we want grand, because we want okay, we want loins. Influencer, what am I influencer? I'm an influencer in this. What do you influence? Have you asked your question? What are you influencing? What do they pay you for? Why are they paying you to be an influencer? Why? What are you talking about? I'm so happy, even if all of you are going to pay me <laughs> and I be the richest, it's because you just know that Dr. Susan Tata is going to put it back to the community. I'm only going to take from one pocket and put it from the other on the same pant, okay? So yes, we can give freely. We can share freely because all these were all ours. To be honest with you, FYI, you are very so right, uh, Nkwame, where's your water? <laughs> and, and exactly what you're asking, I just did not bring. Kwame, I did not bring. I would have just been minding our business. We would have just been minding our business right now. Okay. But no, no, no wahala, no wahala, no wahala, no palava. It's still it. <laughs> it's still it. So nobody's going to teach you anything. No. Yes, I just said, I said, when he said, most of the people in the church is in the back. <laughs> but it's the system of today. Get it right. It is the system of today that makes you feel being in the back or being in the front because we've been grown to put ourselves like Elevate yourself to the position of greatness, which is right. Take yourself, arise. Your vibration has to step up. It has to go to the dimension. It should not go down to the 666. Now, I know when I use the word 666, if you are not in the conscious community, people are going to start talking about, oh, the demon, that is, that is, that they're just the six neutrons. It's the lowest energy of vibration. Six, six, six. And that's why they call it, or, or the churches or some religious bodies or some people call it the, the, the mark of the beast. It is the lowest vibration, the energy of the lowest. And so, yes. So when we say we move up, we arise, the period of the grand rising, and we teach from us to us. We don't eat what we don't cook. We don't farm, we don't, we don't, we don't buy what we don't know. Because I don't want to say we don't buy what we don't plan. Like, you're going to start asking me, like, Kwame, say, where's your water? You're going to ask me, where's your garden? Where's your farm? I left it behind. But I still, I still do just that. Drink water and mind my African business here with you. All right. So, yes, um, it really doesn't matter in our system. The balance is what matters. And we never was the first or the last. No, we never was. Um, the, the, it, exactly. Do diamonds sit in front of other stones? Truth set you free. Correct. That's the narrative. That's what I want to hear. They're on the ground. They're on the ground. And you see the people leave even the first, their top or the first benches to go down on the ground to dig for those diamonds on the ground. 
So exactly that's what it's about. Get the knowledge, African. Get the knowledge. I call all of you my children, my husbands, my, my co-sisters, my, my polygamy sisters, my everything. Get it out there. It's about the balance. It's about the balance. No me, no you. No you, no me. Period. If we like, we excel and fly and, and, and skyscrape. And like, it's me. I'm the employees. I'm the number one. Oh, oh, I feel last because I'm the last and the this. Nothing works. There's no front without a back. There's no back without a front. If everybody will have to sit in front, what about those in the back? If everybody would have to build, who would build for others to sit in or to rent and to coexist? Imagine we had 10 kids and everyone building is on us. This is the theory that we inherited. Me, myself, and I. It's all about me. Me, me, me. My this, my money, my house, my property, my wealth, my children, my this. My art teaches us. No you, no me. So the poor needs the rich. The rich needs the poor. I can imagine how miserable the rich would be without the poor. And that's why I'm always in the balance. Okay? Find your balance. Find the middle. Be the queen. Be the king in the balance. And so when we come to talk about this, this 16 days of our voices on this topic, it's to educate ourselves from it. So that when we go about waving some flags, we don't even know what it means. We should be very, very careful how we carry on these narratives against us. Because at the end of the day, it's about us. At the end of the day, it's us talking how wicked, jealous, black-hearted, bad we are. It's us always saying it. It is us always saying Africans don't support Africans. Africans don't support their own things. Africans are jealous of each other. Africans don't promote African platforms. You know, false narrative. We are the only race that support each other. I can give you one million case studies of it. We are the only. All right, other races. Hey, I'm sorry. I take it back. Not the only, but I know my African race as the race that I know. I've made experiences with others. Okay, I'm not married into others and stuff like that. Like I'm married to my own race. But honestly speaking, none like us. So just talking, they we don't, and start talking, we do. And see how your environment and even you, your mindset, you, whether it's your business from your families to everything, the change of a mindset is just to change your don'ts into do's. It's as simple as that. Everything I say, I attract it. But this is what I'm telling you are going to really be profound, deep, deep teachings. You have to be up to it. The symbol, the, the, the symbol of registration to get access to this information is I am ready and I'm willing. And so I want to get it. And so when you get it, you can digest it to the, and to the level because you want to get there. You want to rise up. You want to be happy. You want to be truly free. You want to be truly living in abundance. I don't know how I can break it down without just, with, I can only do it the simple way I try to do it. So we would have been, We would have been actually like, you know, putting out a PowerPoint here. I show you this and this. That we were, if you want. But what I'm talking about is when I come on the Pan-African Daily TV, when we are here, what we do is we break down, break down to the basics. The basic. I mean, I take it down to the level of every one of us must understand. Remember, as I tell you, we're connecting the diaspora and the continent, and the middle, the migrant. So these three concepts are really three different understandings. 
don't underestimate how damaged we've been. We can speak, even the English, hey, the understanding of what we're speaking is different because it never was our language. And that's why we keep talking about if we will have our language, if I say anything, the meaning will just, if I say palava, you just understand what palava is. If I say wahala, wahala, you just understand. But if I have to go to some kind of quotations that I never even found in them and I have to break them down, how many people will understand? In Nigeria, they will understand it in the Yoruba culture differently. In Cameroon, in the Basa culture or in the Meta culture or the tree or in the, and then us in the diaspora, in the American culture and the language, we'll understand it differently. Do not misunderstand this. Please, I'm begging you, don't underestimate I mean, our difference, not just from our appearance as Africans, but in our mindset and the different educational systems that we have been, you know, evolving on. It is so deep. That's why the biggest market, the biggest system is the programming of the mind. It's, I don't even think it's about the guns. It's about the mind. It's not even about the minerals. Mm. It's about your mind. If I get to your mind, your minerals, you give it to me for free. You get a point? So these are deep stuff. But we have to figure out that situation. And what I'll be doing with you on the deep already was just bringing you the elements of the village. You know, topics like the polygamy. I love it because I'm a product of polygamy. And it's so good, so sweet, so nice. If you know what it is, I bet you queens will be looking for sisters everywhere. Say, come, welcome. And it, it, it's been micromanaged, hijacked, just like any other thing that we created and was hijacked. And so coming to talk about this, oh, against women, um, Everything is women, women that are marginalized, single women, free women, and marginalizing them and putting them into a system of a less powerful position is what I call French. <laughs> it's what I call French because that's not true. Because somebody is always trying to break down the power of the woman, black woman. Black creator, the queen, the black panther, the woman king, the Amazons and his brothers and her brothers and her kings and her kingdoms. That's what we know. And the easiest way is to make you just the weakest, the vulnerable type that every other person can support you, that every other person looks at you as I need to help. We need to help our women our girls, but that's the most powerful foundation. Why do you struggle to always help? It's because even when we rise, you try to suppress us and make us look small. And that's why anything that even when we fight it, no, you take it to become your system and say, no, they are the ones that, do you know how much our men are being abused with this domestic thing? Why do we talk only about the women? Why? Because they, they automatically chewed and put our kings against us and make us paralyzed. And we call it, it's our culture, that the man is the king, the boss, just like the Christ is the head of the church and all that crap. Sorry, and pardon my French, but that's a fact. It is that power that the world has been looking for years, for years, for years to break it down. And until we make this clear, we can look at the symptoms in any format. It's not gonna change anything. It's even only going to get worse. When I talked to a correspondent, a young executive leader in, Man in Namibia, Petrina, and Petrina was like, Queen Mole, it is getting just worse here. Yes, if you don't know the cause, it's going to get even worse because we see only the symptoms and the symptoms keep multiplying when we don't know our value and our systems. We don't know who we are. We don't know where the power lies, who holds the power and who keeps that power for generation upon generation. And there has always been harmony. 
reciprocity, truth, justice, balance, everything has always been there before you were here and even after you will leave. So we need to find that out. We need to position that out on the 16 days. And please, like I said, we're not coming here to begin. Kid, I will send you. If you have a voice and an opinion on this topic, GBF, gender-based violence and domestic violence in every context. If you are an expert on this, if you've done a research on this, if you've been so vocal on this, if this is your, your, your passion in life, if you've been doing a lot of research, if you've been talking about it, if you've been angry about it, and if you've been fighting against it, and sometimes you feel powerless, you want to give up, like I've done everything I can, but it's only exploding these things. We see the battery. We see the abuse. We see the betrayal. We see every kind of things. If you are passionate on this topic, it, we have a 16 days. So send me in your presentation. Reach out to me and I'll take you to be one of our speakers during 16 days. We're going to stay on 16 days. Even if we were going to host other topics on same day, we're going to do two, three topics on the same day. I don't bother, but we are going to do the 16 days. Okay. It kicked up today. And that's why I'm, I'm just giving you the basics, the introduction to everything that we see today. So that when we get into this topic, you already just know what I will not prepare you on anything. I will not do a warm up conversation. I will just go live into it. We'll just go live into it. And so I don't know whatever thing, like I said, I just don't know what we should be talking about without talking about our own solution to our challenges. I don't know whatever business we have in the world. And, and Kwame is going to remind me and say, yes, because you're talking about drinking water and mining up. Said, to be honest, I still say it and I had said it and I'm going to do a, spectra, a, a, a particular lecture on it. I don't know what your business is out here as an African if you are not talking about the solutions to our own challenges and bringing your story out there from the African perspective. I don't know what your business is on earth. I don't know whether you're going to spend 80, 90, 100 years and just go, just transit back doing nothing, just harnessing, harvesting concepts of other uh, uh, cultures and race and their culture and their lifestyle and just doing it in this body? Have you questioned yourself a lot of times? Yes, I go to work, I work my money, I pay my business, but is this really what I came to? Is, is this just all? I sign a contract with the universe, with my ancestors to just come and do? No. Mm -mm. No, I disagree. So look into the passion of your life. Look to the purposes. Look into where your heartbeat lies. Look at those things that make you laugh. That's your passion. That's probably what you came here for. So you might have just been a comedian by birth, by passion. You make us laugh. You might have just been a dancer. You might have just been a painter. You might have just been, uh, I don't know what, a mimica. That, that's truly who you are and why you came. And so if, if, if you, you see people, they sit in the crowd and just make people laugh. But they don't get money for that. They don't entertain with that. And everybody's just like, oh, I know one. Emma is so funny. So, anything he opens his mouth to say, he's just you just laugh and laugh. But he leaves every money. Morning leaves his family, goes to look for a job. And I keep to I tell Emma, this, what is this your job? Why don't we just transform this passion into serving your purpose for your people and your community? So when we talk about world creation in our times to come, and we're talking about the agriculture and part of it, agriculture is not just only farming land, planting seeds, it's everything that you farm 
your talent, your passion that you brought to the universe, you plant it, you water it, it grows and we harvest it and eat it and consume it. So you saw my quotation when I posted, no culture without agriculture. The agriculture is not just the planting, get land, fam. Everything is agriculture. No culture without agri into it. None in the world, in any race. Show me your passion. I will plant your harvest and you would harvest and you will make a wonderful fortune for your community, not just for you, not for yourself. Because that's also one thing we have to know. Who are we doing this for? I'll be on station after this days. Who are we doing it for? <laughs> Who are you doing it for? Who did you came to do it for? When you sign the contracts with your ancestors and the universe and the powers that be, and you said, I'm going, I'm coming to do this. For who? I bet you, if you were coming to do it for yourself, you would never have the permission to come. You came to do it for humanity, for your race, for your people. And that's why you're the chosen. And so it's never had been about me, myself, and I. It's about something else. But when you came, you were raised. I'd already had that conversation here. You were raised. You were choked up from your desires, from your passion, from your vision, and you became something else. You see? And now you begin to become raised. <laughs> yes, Brother Ennis, failure is not an option. Never, ever. We never fail. We lions, lions, nurses. And you see? Yes, Coffee Zuma, welcome. It's a beautiful F water. I'm here, but I'm, I'm busy sharing life. Thank you so much. That's so much contribution, Coffee. That's just it. That's why, and that's who we are. I'll be with you all once I finish. Thank you, Sister Lisbeth Light. Greetings, Sister Lise is here with us. Thank you. Have a great day. When seeing you, things in the beginning. <laughs> and brother, Baba, Baba Marvin, yeah, we had this conversation. One, two. How big is mine? One, two. Each one of us is in control of our one, two. You see? Everything, you can break it down, and it just sounds like poetry, like a movie. But okay, you have to put on, on that motion. You know, everything starts like a movie. You're, you're a movie expert and, and, and an elder in that scene, all the Hollywood movies and scenes, you know the in and out of it. And you see everything that the systems wants to prepare us into, they always come up with a movie. <laughs> and so, yes, even our conversations and our wanting to, we have to, we will have to shoot. But wait, Pan African movie series is coming on. Are you kidding us? Do you want to underestimate what we can do? Wait, give us a give us a break. We're ready for you. We are ready. That's so how Africans are ready. Yes, we're so damn ready and so sure. Yeah. So that is it. That is it. That is it. Thank you so much. Um, who is here again? Well. Noel, Noel Brown, let's stop the talk and rush those people that are causing us problems. Flush them, Noel. Thank you. <laughs> Madi, 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 I already saw you here. Matamera, are you getting ready? They now call it sister wives. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Of course, like I told you, we are the origins of that concept. Okay, it, it, it's it's such a beautiful space. I I, I cannot disagree too much. <laughs> um, yeah. So I'm just saluting you and um to prepare you for the topic tomorrow and the coming days. Like I said, tomorrow we're gonna be having a brother from Congo, and it's not about the GBF or stuff. We are starting our launching of this. 16 days on Sunday at the Maponga 
a session. We're going to start it in the church and officially open it. And we'll go back to that Genesis one when he said women, the role of women and, and, and our roles um, for our children and the role of the man. And that is my art. We already treat it, but we're going to officially launch the 16 days conversation on it again. And he's coming out with another beautiful piece on Sunday. So yes, this brother, I'll be dropping his flyer right tonight. And um, mm -hmm. I'm 48 years blessed from Zion to flight to fight for survival. You're still young. Maddie, you are just a year old. All of us, all of us that has been called, that has been chosen into the elevation, into the elevation, um, into the grand rising, we just knew here. I am three years old here, and so do you. We all reburn, like the church and the Christians who say newborn. And Maponga said it on Sunday. We start today. A new day. Okay. So, yes, and Dr. Elaine said it. Oh, I have to reach out to her because she's going to be one of that. Those are speakers. Dr. Mata is going to be one. I mean, a lot of them. I reach out to Sister Felicia from the Happy Movement. She's going to be, I mean, all of them. Baba Smalls is coming up next week on the topic. So, we want to find out so that when we begin to use some kind of thought and like I said, just run out with some, some agendas that we never even created before you go out there, know what you're doing. And if, if need be, we are going to create it ourselves. Habani Ghani, Richard Sheffield. Thank you. Johnny, Johnny, Johnny Johnson. Richard, I greet you. I salute you. Are you, are you, are you, are you sending us greetings from the continent or in the diaspora? Grace. Jesus. Let me use the, 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 the black one. Sister Grace Jaravanza. You are watching with us today. Where have you been, Queen? Where have you been? Where have you just been? Where have you been? <laughs> Where have you been? Okay. Where have you been? So, yes. Did I miss out on anybody here? Because I'm rounding up. I need to go. Um, Ashley is waiting. That's my princess, Muyang. Um... Where do we go? Where do we go? Did I miss somebody out here without saying? <laughs> That's what I'm looking at. Be the Africa you want. Sure. And we. Be the part of the puzzle. Yeah. All right. So I think if there's no one that I did that I missed out on here without greeting. Um, I'd like to wish you guys a wonderful, wonderful Friday. Um, and you know, we at the F1, we come from the F1 tribe, the Friday bonds, and Friday is always the gig. If you want to watch me at my best, I mean, every day is my day, but you know, the Fridays, the F1s are just doing their thing on this day. I don't know where Ayoke is today. And um, ah, Amalekeni, Akani. Bring back King Bongane and King Gingone. Thank you. See, I'm already calling out <laughs> on them. Queen Gingone, we've been communicating and we even had to meet on a face-to-face. -face. That giant queen, I bet you don't want to touch base. She is on fire. I will reach out to her immediately. And I really had forgotten her on this project. How come? But she will be on board. King Bongane... Um, like I told you, was uh, busy. They had a launch on this uh, Lumi currency out there. And um, I mean, they were really exhausted because it was big. And he asked me to give him some time. I already had told you that he would be coming with some delegates that were out there. But it was just so much and they couldn't make it. So I'm giving him his space. You know, he's a king. He's this royal, imperial majesty. 
It's not just like we, and they just becoming. I mean, we have to really take care of our, our elders. We have to, how we run them over, irrespective of how we want them to lecture to us, how we want to see them. But I told you in one of my sessions here with you that I am the one that reach out to them and I really give them that space. And I understand every situation and I mean, not bad situations anyway. I understand their energy level and what they've been able to put out there. And I don't just want to make any roadshow, okay? These are royals, are dignitaries, are nobles. And so I don't just reach out to them anyhow and just like, come and talk to your children. Eh? I mean, they, they gave you all the food. Go to all his sessions on the Pan-African Daily TV. They're all the, the things, the, the lectures and, and the time with you there. And you meet. Of course, us is continue having our time and our space. This is our church, our mission. We are missionaries are coming, our work, our everything that we do here. I do understand, but, you know, they are royals and they need to be treated like that, unfortunately. <laughs> but the queen of Embo is, yes, you can see me. Queen of Ashanti, Asin, queen of, how many queens? Queen of Africa. <laughs> I'm here. So, but if you are really hungry for your royals, of course, I reach out to them and I give them the feed. In life, and they come because they had installed me and put me out there and like go there anything they want when we are here the one land we are here do they want to see us we are here do they want us to celebrate and eat with them we are here and we're in the background trying to correct the errors of the past that's what they're doing too much work in the background to do people yeah so but in any case i myself am on the show so i'm gonna have him here and like i said please let's just be considerate about our elders. Most of them are really just not living the life that they're supposed to live in their noble, but that will be a topic. How do we care for our elders? We have to put a funding for them. And that's why we have to put our funds where our mouth is so that we start taking care of them. You see how the Europeans have done it in such a clever format and they build a home, a, 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 a home for the elders. Um, but that's not our African culture, but we have to do it when we're in the diaspora, it's okay. But I'm talking about the spirit in that space. They should not lack anything. When we are able, when we are strong, when we are young, when we are energetic, when we are intelligent, there should not be any of our elders that will die poor. When I say die poor, it's nobody that, people that are not there for him or for her. And that is what gender violence should be talking about. Most African queens, mothers, kings that die and poverty and go back just like, yeah. You know. But I know uh, Sherry and my, uh, my queens and the young executives, they're watching me and they'll be questioning me in the next session that we're having tomorrow in the team meeting. Like, but what do you mean by like, they live poor? <laughs> and I'll be ready to answer those questions back in the planning team of tomorrow. But anyway, you understand what I mean. Um, you understand what I mean, and uh, we just know it. <laughs> hey, okay, you have run. Sure, I hate to leave your lay much gold. Um, yes, I know. Most of us, we also have to leave. It's already uh, one minute to one hour thirty, so I didn't cheat you on anything. You eat or not? Um, so. We are going back to our session. Tomorrow, watch out, please. Watch out for this brother uh, from the DRC. DRC, Nigeria, very important case studies. We should never take off our eyes of them. Never, ever. Yes. And so, yes, he's going to be on tomorrow. And, and we just like to get his perspective, his um. Uh, projects, uh, his missions, all what he's doing there. And he's actually highly connected. And um, I've read his, I just glanced his biography and there's just too much stuff there. You know, I don't share people's biography. They come and tell us what they, if I have to be telling you what they've been doing, what would they come here and be talking about? We don't have time for that. They have to come here. You were in Africa, Grace. 
No, you come and tell us. You come and just tell us. You see, most of the time we spend time here, Dr. Susan Tata, the executive team, we empower others and they just sneakily, like Grace, go to Africa, do their business there, you know, plan their stuff, buy their land and come back here. Anyway, but be aware, any one of you, I had told you from the beginning of this show, whether you're building a house, you have a land, you have a farm on the continent or in the diaspora. These are all properties of the Pan-African Dairy and Dr. Susan Tata. I don't have time to go and buy land and buy and look for where I have to host because I'm hosting and I'm doing here. So everything you're doing is for me. My retirement is secured. I, I, I just don't even know where I was stay because <laughs> it's to be so much. Okay, so we don't need for one another. Richard say you're in North Carolina, Ryla. Ah, okay. Wonderful. I should be in South Carolina to mean to meet um, the Yoruba kingdom. You know about the, the Yoruba kingdom, the Gishis out there in South Carolina. Um, yes. So that is a foundation where we have to be there and talk to the royals there. And you would understand the deepest part of our history that lies in the Yoruba cultures. Whether it's in Brazil, in Haiti, in Colombia, in the Panama, in the Caribbean, in Americas, you would see the importance of how this culture, the Yoruba, and we see the music that is coming out now. So it's just the chosen race. <laughs> and we are all the Yorubas, the Kemenites, the Sudanese, okay, the Egyptians. Hmm. Wow. Right, so we see ourselves. Happy belated Thanksgiving to all of you. And uh, mm -hmm, me too. A moment of gratitude, sharing. And today is a Friday. Go hang out, do a lot of dancing. And please, the common rhythm that we all know is to, you know, wind our, wind our bottoms. <laughs> and a lot of people are like, ah, nasty. Go back to your culture, people. They just have a lot of ignorance. And we, a lot, we don't know the roots. And that's why, like I said, somebody hijacked and demonized it and bring it back to you. And you begin to look at it like, oh, look at how they're. Your great, great ancestors do it, did it. And that way shaken all the African culture. We dance with our behinds and stuff like that. You go to the history, our story about why we did it and how we did it and the purpose. Then you would see it from a conscious point of view and you would dance to shake. Okay. Because of the, of the mechanism and the electricity and the spirituality in it, you will get to understand a lot. So yes, these are all things that we'll be doing in the Pan-African days. Our hands. Why do the African women dance with, with, with their hands? Why? And the whole world is staring. If you ever said, that's the only one of the pieces that nobody hijacks from you because it, it, it must only be you to do it. Why? Do we dance with the behinds? A lot of history hidden in it. A lot of power and greatness. Okay. So yes, if you're going out, please make sure you have fun. Take care of yourself. Take care of your loved ones. Just enjoy. Enjoy your greatness. Enjoy your elevation. Enjoy your power. Enjoy everything. <laughs> everything. It's your time to shine, to glue, to bloom, to, to, to just explode. To vibe to the highest, it's yours. <laughs> Cheryl, it seems as if you know something about this curly thing, but we're gonna discuss about it later. <laughs> I don't wanna I don't wanna eat up all your times out there. So yes, we're gonna do it. It's all fire. It's on fire. So I see you guys tomorrow. Please consider subscribing and sharing. Just do what. Coffee has been doing before he's coming late. Coffee comes late most of the times here because he just sits behind while I go live. All he does is sharing on all platforms in the background. 
If we don't have time to do that, now we have time. Make sure you go out and just share and share and share the conversations. And Patrick is going to take the conversations and split them into the capturing points. And we're going to be distributing them on our reel, on our talk show, on our TikToks. I mean, we're expanding to those other platforms on our Instagram pages. And I'll announce it to you in the days coming ahead and share the links with you. Um, I want to bring a feedback uh, to, to one of you that reached out to me on um, the Telegram. And we also created the Telegraph group, and it's just amazing. I think there are more than a thousand on it just in the past three days. And do not forget, we'll, we'll be relocating our Afro World TV to another site because the hackers and the enemies have been penetrating, penetrating. Each time we want to launch that app live, they take it down on in all sort of ways you cannot imagine. Our TV would have been live long time ago, even in the smallest format, but they keep just not doing it. So yes, we'll be relocating it to another server. And um, when it is up and running, we'll let you know about it. Okay. So yes, Grace said it was good feeling walking barefoot. Africa is something else. Grace, you tell us this. So you're one of the speakers on the GBF week, 16 powerful voices at home and abroad addressing this domestic violence. It has to stop where the narrative started and it has to start where we decide to start and take it to the next level. So thank you so very much. And we see ourselves tomorrow and watch out for the brother from Congo that is coming and enjoy yourselves out there and make sure you do the calling. Girls, you know what I'm talking about here. I'm talking to the baby girl, Cherie, to Nanada, to Sonovia, to Grace, to Matamera, you know, to all of you, the baby girls out here. That's the palaver, woman power. It's not found in beating and hitting and hitting each other. Uh-uh. It is found somewhere else. And you know where it is. Nice time, nice time, please. We see us tomorrow, okay? Good night to all of you. I love you. Akuna you Matata. are watching the Pan-African Daily TV with Dr. Susan Tata. The Africa we want, unity, consciousness, our culture, our spirituality, our history. One Africa for Africans worldwide. Motherlands calling its diaspora home. Join my voice, join my team, join my campaign. Campaign 21 hashtag 1 million subscribers on the Pan-African Daily TV YouTube. Be a volunteer. Apply now. Be the new Africa.